let's pray for Israel right now, and then I'm going to get Pam to come and pray over families in just a minute. Father, in Jesus' name, we just lift up Europe. We lift up Asia. We lift up um, God, the Middle East, in Jesus' name. Lord, we're a praying church, and that's what tonight is all about. But, Lord, we lift up uh, your chosen people, the Israelites, God. Israel, Lord, that land, Lord. And right now, we, we pray that, and we know that churches and uh, nations all over are praying, but, Lord, we just join with that, and we pray that no weapon formed against your chosen people will prosper. And, God, as it says in Deuteronomy 30, 30. God, you'll bless them in the city, and you'll bless them in the country. And, Lord, we just pray that your uh, hedge of protection will be around your people and leadership uh, in Israel, God. We just proclaim right now that they will have a God conscience, and they will not operate uh, under their own esteem. But the Spirit of the living God will rise up, and God, lead them just as you did 3,000 years ago as a nation, God. You'll lead them once again, oh God, and they'll return to you, and we'll We'll just see a harvest of, of Jewish people giving their hearts, Messianic Jews, just saying we want to do things God's way. And we, we just sense that, that Jesus is getting ready to come back, and he's going to come back, uh, according to your word, um, in, in Israel, God, and set his foot in Jerusalem again. So, Lord, we just believe uh, this is a sense of preparation for the next thing and then the next thing. And so, God, we pray and we speak prophetically over your chosen people right now. God, the resources, those that are hurting, those that are displaced, those that are a lost family, God, right now, have your hand. Have churches and ministries ready to go in and minister to the, the holistic needs and the spiritual needs of your people, oh God. God, just we pray against every demonic principality that wages war. We know probably if we could only see in the spirit realm what's really happening over the Middle East right now, Lord. But we're praying that the prince of Persia and the prince of Greece uh, will be driven back by, the, by, by Michael and Gabriel and the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of God would just uh, drive back the forces of darkness right now. God, we want to be on the side of the armies of God. We don't ever want to see our, uh, put ourselves in a position where we're against you, Lord, but we l- align ourselves with the will of God tonight. God, your word says in Genesis 12, 3, I will bless those who bless you, but I will curse those who curse you. So, Lord, we're just putting ourselves in alignment. We're standing in the gap for Israel right now. God, we love you tonight. We know that you're working. You're here, but you're also there. And we thank you that you hear our prayers tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. If Pam, if you'll come up and pray over families. Yep, give it up. <laughs> I, don't, I was thinking of families today, and the word that came to me was steadfast, immovable families. Can you imagine if every single one of the families here was steadfast? Um, so let's pray for that. Um, in 1 Corinthians, uh, it says, Therefore, my brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your toil is not in vain. Raising these children is not in vain. It may be the next Kenneth Copeland, John Maxwell that you're raising. I'm sure that Elizabeth's mom didn't know that she was raising the mother of John the Baptist. So you don't know what what God has planned through you. So let's pray that we're steadfast, no matter how stubborn our children are, no matter how how many days, you know, the gray hairs have come out. We are immovable knowing knowing that there is great plans and purposes that God has for our children and for our family. So, Father, Lord, I just pray tonight, God. I pray for every man that leads a home, every man in this place, Father, Lord, that, that, God, you have called as the head of the home, God. God, we pray that they are steadfast men, men that long for you, for your presence, for your presence in their homes, for your presence, Father Lord, in their workplace, that everywhere they go, Father Lord, they seek you first. Father, they seek your wisdom, your guidance, God. I pray, Father Lord, that they love their wife as themselves, Father. I pray, Father, that they seek your guidance and your wisdom before they do anything, before they take one step, God, they look to you. God, I pray for courage, courage to face this the adversities in the world. God, I declare any spirit of depression or anxiety.
anxiety that may come upon them right now in the name of Jesus they are released and they put their trust in you knowing you are their rock and their fortress God God I thank you for the wives in this room I thank you Father Lord that they honor and respect their husbands God God that they are women that edify and build up their house Lord, Father, I pray for those that feel like Martha, that they are so concerned with the things of this world and don't know how to just sit in your presence. God, calm her heart. Calm her mind, God. That she may feel your presence again. That the joy of the Lord be her strength, God. Give her wisdom, Lord, Father, every night as she's putting her babies to sleep, Lord, Father. Holy Spirit, speak to her and through her to those children that they are raising, God. God, I pray for every child that has walked away from you. I call them back to you. Father, I declare that there's no spirit of rebellion, Father Lord. Father Lord, we rebuke all spirit of rebellion. We declare that it has no power over authority over our children, that our children walk with you all the days of their lives. That as parents, we stand and we say that me and my house will serve the Lord all the days. We will honor you, that the presence of God will fill our homes, that the joy of the Lord will constantly be. Father, Lord, praises in our mouths, God. That our children can look at us as parents and see you in every thing that does, that we're not moved, that we're steadfast, knowing that doesn't matter what things are going around us, no matter, Father Lord, the circumstances, the tribulations, God, we trust in a God that is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I just praise you, God. I praise you, Lord, that you haven't changed. God, I pray, Lord, Father, for the schools that these children are in, Father Lord, the workplaces that these parents are in. God, I just pray that your presence be there. God, I pray that we're able to be the light in the darkness, God. And as a family, Father, we can represent you and the family of God that you have called us to be, Lord. I pray for every single mom and dad that's in this place. May they cast their worries upon you, knowing that you are their everything, their provider, Lord Father that you are their, their comforter. You are their companion, Father. And God, I just pray that the desires of their heart lines up with your desires and your will for them, God. I thank you. I thank you, Father. And I declare that at Rise Church, Father Lord, that these families will walk in unity, walk in peace, and the blessings of God will overflow in their homes. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Tonight, I will be praying for the lost. And I'm so full right now because over the last two months or more, God has really given me a burden for the lost, particularly those in my family. I've really been covering them um, in prayer. And as I meditated today about Jesus, my heart was just so full of gratitude because he came. He came to save and to seek the lost. He came to die on the cross for our sins. He came to reconcile mankind. And tonight, I am so grateful, church, that he, he came. He came. He came. Isaiah 60 and verse 1 says the spirit of the Lord God 
is upon me because the Lord has anointed and qualified me to preach the gospel of good tidings to the meek, the poor and afflicted. He has sent me to bind up and heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the physical and spiritual captives and the opening of the prison and of the eyes to those who are bound. So, Father God, tonight we lift up the lost to you, Father. We thank you on tonight, Jesus, that you came. You came to save and to seek the lost. You came to reconcile them back to you, God. We thank you on tonight, Father God, that your love for them has not changed, God, that you have a plan and a purpose for their lives. So, God, we call them into your fold, God. We call them into the family of God. We thank you on tonight, Father God, that you came for them. And we know, Father God, that you have a purpose and a plan for their lives. We know that they are valuable to you, God. Throughout the Bible, you talked about parables, the parable of the lost sheep and the parable of the lost coin and the hidden treasures and the pearls. God, it revealed your heart about the lost. And because they are valuable to you, Father, may they be valuable to us, God. I pray, Father, that you would give us a burden for the lost, God. I pray, pray, Father, that you would raise up a remnant of people, that you would raise up ministers, and you would raise up missionaries, and you would raise up evangelists, and you would raise up teachers and preachers that would preach the gospel to the lost, that would share the good news of the gospel to the lost, Father, because you have a purpose and a plan for their lives. I thank you, Father, that their identity is not lost, God. We come against every spirit. We come against every assignment of the enemy that has been sent out to steal their identity, Father. We protect their identity. We know that their identity is protected in you, Father. And, Father, we thank you on tonight that your love for them is as, is as wide as the ocean, oh God. We thank you, Father, that your plan for them has not changed, God. So, God, we thank you on today for all that you are doing and all that you are going to do, Father. We lift up the prodigals on tonight, God. We thank you, Father, that the plans that you have for them has not changed, God. We call every prodigal home. We call every prodigal home on tonight, Father. God, we ask that you would keep a hedge of protection encamped around them. And I pray on tonight, God, that you would not let them rest until they say yes to you, Father. I pray, Father God, that they will have an encounter with you that will shake the very core of who they are, God. Oh, Father God, we thank you on tonight, God. I lift up every mother and every father who's been covering their seed in prayer. Father, your promises are true, and your word says that the seed of the righteous shall be saved. Your word says that the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. So, God, we stand in the gap for every prodigal on tonight, and we call them saved on tonight. We call them delivered on tonight, Father. We call them home to you, Father, on tonight. And so I pray for every mother and every father that's been covering their child, God. I pray that you will comfort them, God. And I pray, Father God, that you will let them know that you have heard every prayer. And not one word, not one prayer that they pray will fall to the ground, Father. We thank you, Father, that we will live to see the manifestation of those prayers, God. Father, we thank you on tonight because you're faithful. You're faithful, God. You are so faithful, Jesus. God, we thank you that you're honoring our prayers. We thank you, 
God, for raising up people that will weep. You told me to weep between the porch and the altar. You told me to travail for my children and my family. I thank you that you're raising up people that will weep between the porch and the altar, that will stand in the gap, that will stand in the gap and tell the enemy that he's a liar. We plead the blood of Jesus against Satan on today, and we cancel every assignment of the enemy. We cancel every plot. We cancel every plan. We cancel every trick and every strategy of the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. And we declare the word of the Lord over the lost. We declare the word of the Lord over the prodigals. And we thank you on tonight, God that you're going to do just what you said that you would do. You're not like man that you should lie. If you said it, God, you're going to do it. If you spoke it, your word said that you would bring it to pass. So tonight, God, we're standing on your word. We're standing on your promises, and we claim them all for the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're getting ready to, to pray over the economy. We're going to pray over jobs. We're going to pray over our government. And I want to encourage you tonight before we start praying. A lot of times I feel like we think that the economy and the job market and the government's really beyond our control. But I want to remind you who we're praying to. I want to remind you that, that Psalm 24 says that the world is the Lord and everything that's in the, in the world, which means the economy, the job, the governments. He sets it up, he tears it down, he provides. So I don't want you to feel like this is one of those things that you're just going to pray and check it off. I want you to understand that that you have the authority to go to your Heavenly Father and say, this is what I want for my area. This is what I want for my family. This is what I want for my church. So when we pray, I want you to understand you're not just praying for yourself, but you're praying for this area. You're praying for our state. You're praying for our nation. You're praying that those will be blessed just because you're in that building. You understand what I'm saying? Let us just pray. Heavenly Father, oh God, the fact that we can come to you, Lord, and we have access to the great I am. We have access to the great provider. Lord, I, I, I was just reminded that, that in King Solomon's day, Lord, in First Kings, it says that silver was worthless because you had blessed the nation. And Lord, I'm a firm believer that you were blessing that nation because the nation was seeking after you. So God, I pray that, that you would raise up business leaders in this community, God, that seek after your heart. God, I pray for those that are in this room right now that are, that, are, that are in the workforce, God, that, Lord, you would lift them up at their job to turn the culture around so that it seeks after you, Lord. It doesn't matter what other people think, God. When your spirit moves, it moves. So I pray you begin to move in the industries in this area, God, that something would shift, something would change, that people would say there's something different about this place. There's something different about this job. And, Lord, we'll understand that it's not a job. It's a ministry. And everything else that comes out of it is simply a byproduct product of that ministry, God. So I pray that you would just shift our focus on, on what we can do at our jobs. God, I thank you for the, the paycheck that comes along with them, but Lord, there's so much more there. There's opportunity to preach the gospel. There's opportunity to lay hands on people. There's opportunity to see miracles. There's opportunity for growth, God. I pray that you would just shift our focus on what you want us to do in this economy, that it's more than just money. And God, I do pray for provision for your people. Lord, I pray that you would bring in so many jobs, Lord, that unemployment in Nash and Edgecombe, Wilson County would be zero, Lord. That people be, be, be coming from other counties to work in here because you've got so many jobs here. And, Lord, while I'm here, I want to say thank you that that, that, that casino is on hold, Lord. It's not coming, and we're believing that it's not going to come. And, God, I pray you would replace it with better jobs with more fruitful jobs, with better paying jobs that don't come with addiction, that don't come with all the bad things, Lord, but are just fruitful for your kingdom, that, that, that they take part of their proceeds and they're doing ministry, God, that, that they have prayer teams and ministry teams and they're supporting churches. And, Lord, you provide avenues for the church to get out to the workforce, Lord, that ministries are going to have to be birthed at Rise Church to get into the economy to lay hands on people at jobs because people want to see Jesus move. 
And Lord, a lot of this I know is a government thing. So God, I pray for the leadership in the government. Lord, that they would make wise decisions. Wise decisions. And that doesn't mean it's got to be what we think it is. I want it to be what you think it needs to be, God. I pray that you would stir the spirit of, of, of the hearts of our leaders, God. And if they don't know you, God, send revival in the government buildings. Get them to know who you are. And, Lord, I pray that if they're stubborn, they're hard-hearted, okay, Lord, take them out, put somebody in there that seeks after you. But, Lord, we just pray that you would just shut doors that need to be shut and votes. And, and, and people are saying they want to come to this area that don't need to come here, God, and that you would open the doors for people to come in here and just bring the right business. And, Lord, I pray that you would birth businesses in your people. I'm talking about we're going to have people sitting in this room, Lord, that are going to build something. They're going to build legacy. They're going to build kingdom work. They're going to build businesses that aren't there to sell a chicken sandwich by itself, but there to touch people, Lord. I'm talking about you do something that blows our expectations. Because, God, it's all yours. It's all yours. And, Lord, I know what the news says. I know they're talking about recessions and possible depressions. But, God, we rebuke that in the name of Jesus, and we pray for favor. We pray for unmerited favor. Lord, I know that the Bible talks about money so many times because that's our natural desire to get fearful. So, God, I rebuke fear over finances. I rebuke fear over worry where their next meal's coming from. God, I rebuke fear of job security. God, I rebuke fear of, of unemployment. And, Lord, I pray for those that have decisions to make in their jobs. God, give them clarity. Give them wisdom. Give them discernment. God, I pray you would bring to light anything the enemy is trying to do in a backdoor way in our economy, in our jobs, in our government. Lord, he can't have it. He can't win. We call it not. We speak life over Nash, Edgecombe, and Wilson County. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Trey. Hey, Casey, if you, um, I've asked her to kind of put her on the spot there. Put this verse up here. I was, this is the verse of the day. You might get it. I get it on my email every day, and I always try to take time to read it. But I, I got to reading it, and I read it today about 20 times. And I've never just really studied. Anybody know what ruminate means? If you're an old cow and you're ruminating, you just chew on it, and you spit it up, and you chew on it, and you spit it up. But I just want to encourage you, as, as Pastor Trey was praying over the government and finances and businesses, this is for you if you'll receive it. I want you to read it with me. I'm going to read it real slow. This is what we taught me, taught me in Bible college, how to break it down, every single word. And God is able to bless who? You. How? So that, so that what? Yeah. You know, things when having you will abound in every good work do you receive that tonight he will provide it seek first the kingdom man that one little verse just I, I just can't read it I'm like I don't need to worry about anything because in all things he's going to take care of it in all things to abound in every good work father just to tack on to what Pastor Trey prayed, I pray over the finances of your people. God, my God, will supply all of my needs according to his riches as I do his work, as I am an agent of heaven, an ambassador of heaven, a light in a dark place. I don't need to worry about money, God, because you will take care of my coming and my going. And I claim this word. This is not a prosperity thing. This is a promise. This is something we stand on, that you will take care of us. And I pray for anybody under the sound of my voice, whether they're in this room or watching on live stream that's in a financial jam right now, may you show your, your strength and your abundance to their, their situation right now, that every need will be taken care of. God, every bill will be paid. God, there'll be money, there'll be seed that we can give it away and sow and be generous. Oh, God, will you pour out, the, open up the windows of heaven over your people, God, in an abundant fashion, Lord, not so we can have a bunch and buy a bunch of toys, but so we can do the good work that you've called us to do. We can focus on that thing that the marriages will not be so under stress. We turn to you, God, in the area of finances right now, and I pray over every single household. It doesn't matter if it's single moms, single dads, uh, uh, elderly, God, in Jesus' name. 
supply, supply, supply for your people, oh God. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. Will you stand up on your feet? I want everybody to come on down. Brother O.D. is going to come and do our final prayer. Praise team, go ahead and get ready. And let's just go ahead and, is it okay if we they could gather around? All right. Take charge, brother. all heard the prayers and the requests that have gone forth tonight but the thing that God has quickened in my spirit this week that we need to have faith to believe that God is able to do exceedingly above all that we should ask or think according to the power that worketh in us and he reminded me now faith Alan is the things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. We can't see it. We have no idea. But God sees each and every one of us. And I want you to stand in agreement with me tonight because he said, if two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. So, Father God, we come before you tonight. And your word said that we can come boldly to the throne of grace that we might attain mercy to find grace in our time of need. So, Father God, we cry out to you tonight by faith, Father God. Father God, we call, we cry out to you, Father God, for healing and deliverance right now in the name of Jesus. Father, you said that you was wounded for our transgressions and you was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of your peace is upon us. And by your stripes we are healed. So right now, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit and by faith, Father God, we send your word to heal, to deliver, and to set free. Father, there's people that's out there that's listening right now at the prayer request that have gone forth in this room. So, Father God, you said that I sent my word and I healed them and I delivered them from all their destruction. So, Father God, right now, we send your word to meet the need of your peoples tonight. We send your word right here, Father God. There are people that came in here, Father, that are heavy burdened. Father God, there are things that's going on in each and every one of us lives, Father, that we need you to intervene. As they were praying about finances, as we were praying about our family and the government, Father God, we release everything to you by faith. Believing, Father God, that you will show us what we need to do in this next season. So, Father God, I pray right now for the greatest manifestation of your presence in each and every one of us lives tonight. In our homes, in our community, in our city, Father God. We pray, Father God, that your presence as Jamila said, Father God, in your presence there's fullness of joy. Everything that we need is in the presence of the Lord. Give us a hunger, Father God. Give us a thirst for your hunger. You said that those that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Fill us a fresh Father. Fill us a fresh fire. May the fresh fire of the Holy Spirit blow upon us tonight, Father God. As we seek the face of the living God, Father God, we cry out to you, Father God, the true and living God, the only God, the only God. And there's no name, Father God, that's above your name. And Father God, there's, a, there's healing in your name. There's deliverance in your name. So Father God, we thank you right now as we humble ourselves before you and bow before you tonight. We thank you for what you're doing in our family, what you're doing in our home, and what you're doing in our community and our church, Father. But, Father God, I was reminded earlier that your words say, when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith on the earth? 
Oh, God, fill us afresh, faith, Father, because your word said I've dealt each man a measure of faith. So tonight, Father God, we will release our faith. We call those things to be not though they were by faith. Father God, healing is taking place right now in this room. Healing is taking place. Addiction is being broken right now in the name of Jesus. We come against any demonic spirit that will try to take us down, that will try to get us to go in the wrong direction, that will cause confusion and chaos in our home. And we pray right now for the unity in the body of Christ. And Father God, as my sister was saying, my daughter, my spiritual daughter, what profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his very soul? So, Father God, we set ourselves in agreement right now with every request that has gone before you tonight. And now this is the confidence, Father, that we have in you, that if we ask anything according to your will, you hear us. And we have those petitions which we have requested. So, Father God, we thank you tonight that you've heard each and every request. And, Father God, I pray a special prayer for every person that's here tonight. I pray that you will give them a tongue of the learning, that they're able to speak a word in season to those who are weary. I pray, Father God, that you will give them the ear of the learning, that they are able to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to these in these last days, Father God. So, Father God, we thank you right now for what you've done and what you will continue to do. Father God, I heard John the Baptist say, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Father God, I pray right now, each and every one of us need to repent. We got family members, Father God, that you've allowed us to stand in the gap for. And I was reminded earlier today, Jason, when Ezekiel and God said, I saw the man that was standing in the gap and make up the head. But the saddest part about it, Jamila, he found no one. And here we are tonight. Prayers that's been prayed silent. Prayers that's been prayed openly. And we're letting the enemy know that we're not going to be silent. That we're going to pray as the Holy Spirit leads us to pray. And we're going to pray out loud. And we're going to put it in the atmosphere like we did tonight. So when you go back home, remember this. Put it in the atmosphere. Whatever the Holy Spirit is saying to you, you put it in the, in the atmosphere. And believe God for it by faith. Believe God for that family member that is lost. That family member that is hurt. Father God, we thank you again for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon me. So, Father God, as we close out tonight, we pray that you will continue to be glorified, that you will continue to be lifted up. Because, Father, you said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. So, Father God, we lift you up tonight. And we say, Holy Spirit of the living God, you're welcome in our home. You're welcome in our city. You are welcome in our nation, in our community, Father that you may receive all the praise and all the glory. Hey, listen, if you need healing in your body, just go ahead and stick your hand up right now. We're going to close out. If you need a miracle or you need healing of any type, emotional, physical healing right now, if you see someone with their hand lifted up, I want you guys to sing a little bit of uh, the blood. What is it? Thank you for the blood. Yeah, they're going to sing about the blood. And we're going to believe for your healing. If you see someone with their hand lifted up, and I also want to just challenge you tonight, if there's anyone who's just dealing with shame or you're dealing with uh, unforgiveness or anything like that, we're not going to call you out, but get your breakthrough tonight, man. Get free tonight. Um, let God just touch your heart right now. Let's sing together. And I'm going to have, but before they start, hold on. I was just reminded of something that Jason was talking about, the blood. Most of you know my story. You know, I almost died twice, six and a half months out of one year. I was in the hospital bedridden, couldn't walk when I, when I went home. But look at me now. 
Look at me now. And one of the prayers, and I don't say that boastfully, and one of the prayers that I will live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. So we're doing this tonight. We'll believe in God for miracles in this house tonight. Miracles to heal and to deliver and to set free. The word said that they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. And my point is, Jason, that when I was in the hospital, this nurse came in, technician came in early one morning about three or four o'clock in the morning. Just, I mean, she was loud. I mean, loud, 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 loud. And when she got in the room, I said, really have to be that loud at 3.30 in the morning. Well, I came in to get some blood. I said, I understand that. But do you really have to be that loud? And she looked at me and she said, you know what? The blood tells the story. So right now, I want you to know that the blood is covering each and every one of your families, your homes, your community. The blood of Jesus Christ. And as they sing this song about the blood, you remember that the blood set us free. And it's because of the blood that we can stand here and lift up the name of Jesus.